the world elite. To come up at that time, uh, the big fear was population growth and then limits to growth. And there were a book, and they released a book called Limits to Growth. I encourage you to read it. Uh, it's real. And essentially, that group wanted to take control from a global perspective, um, the nation state, basically everything, every decision being made that affects the world, the planet, the climate, uh, they want to control it. They want to control the narrative. So they created, and this is where a lot of you have probably heard Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Agenda, Transforming Our World. This is where that agenda, 21, 2030, now the Great Reset, was hatched. That's where it, it was conceptualized amongst those elites. That agenda has been in creation and evolution uh, up until this very day. It's gone through a number of different incarnations. It's been put into place, so it's, it's not something that we're looking at in the future, it's here. It's been here for a while, and they've done it through the federal government, provincial government, municipal governments, all levels, through Agenda 21. Agenda 21 being it for an agenda for the 21st century. 2030 is a bunch of goals they want to meet by 2030, but associated with Agenda 21 as part of this bigger plan. So it's, it went from eight goals to 10 goals to now 17 goals. And if you read the Sustainable Development Agenda, you read the 17 goals, the 169 targets, and the 248 indicators, it basically boils down to the Communist Manifesto. It's what it is. It's just printed up, there's a whole lot more words, but it essentially means exactly the same thing. And I'm not going to go through the Communist Manifesto, I'm going to encourage you to have a look at it. Compare it then to the 17 goals, the 169 targets, and the 248 indicators. So you go through these goals, <clears throat> 17 of them, and it's essentially controlling every aspect of your life. Everything you do. Where you live, how you live, how you eat, how you produce, how you move, how you breathe. It's going to destroy Western civilization. That is one of their goals. Western civilization, based on Christian values, is the best civilization humanity has ever known. It represents freedom, individual freedom, Liberty, justice, prosperity, actual equality, actual diversity. And they want to destroy it because it represents the single biggest hurdle to them achieving their goals of total control, global governance. And don't kid yourselves, we're already under global governance. Steve Harper signed. The Sustainable Development Agenda, transforming our world one month before the election of Trudeau, the first time around. One month before. The minute Trudeau got into power, his first public appearance, he referred to Canada as a post-national state. Let that sink in what that means. Because when he first said it, it flew over 99.9% .9 of everyone's head. They had no idea what he was talking about. Post-national state. At that moment I knew we were under global governance. I mean I knew it as soon as the agenda was signed. The 
first time in 92 that it was coming. But this was a real strong indicator from our elected prime minister that we were under global governance. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a campaign to create a UN parliament. So I'm going to get into a little bit of the UN. Um, but before I do, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. So in 92, uh, <clears throat> they created the first Agenda 21 in Rio de Janeiro, called the Rio Declaration. That was the first major incarnation signed by Ryan Mulroney, conservative. Um, then it was signed again, called the Millennial Goals, signed by Harper. Then it was Stephen Harper that brought in legislation in Canada in 2008 called the Sustainability Act. And again, it was the Harper government that signed on in 2015. So this isn't our view mentioned this left-right dichotomy. It's where they like us. It's where they want us to think. They want us at each other's throat. Blue, red, Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. They love us there. Because we're we're keeping our eye off the target. They're keeping us fighting amongst ourselves for this theater of politics. And it is theater. They've all bought into this. Every single one of them. Every single MP sitting in the parliament right now has bought into globalism. They bought into the agenda. Every single one of them. Now, I'll, I'll say that a lot of MPs don't know it. They have no idea. They have absolutely no idea. The elite of each party, the brass, the smoke-filled back room, they all know, uh, and they just dictate to the rest of the MPs who are elected. Elected to represent the people, they don't. They represent the party, regardless of the party. So, we're in this agreement. A lot of organizations have been created to promote this agenda. The head of each one of these organizations either comes directly from Socialist International or some entity of the like. So that's the socialist communist aspect. They develop the plans, they develop the agendas. And then, in 2019, June of 2019, enter the World Economic Forum, when they signed an agreement with the UN to merge the Great Reset with Sustainable Development Goals. And so now you have, officially at that point, the official convergence of communism and fascism through technocracy. That is the new world order that George Bush I first brought to the table. I didn't make up the world new world, the word new world order, the phrase. But every time I bring it up, for 20 years I've been referred to as a conspiracy theorist because I did. But that is the new world order. This convergence of traditional enemies, communists and fascists. See, there's this idea through our education system that communists are on the left and fascists are on the right. The communists are red, the fascists are blue, the liberals are commies, the conservatives are fascists, that's what they like us. It's not true. It's never been true. On the left side of the political spectrum, you have totalitarianism, authoritarianism, government, big government, nanny states, run either by communists or fascists. That's where they reside. That's where they are. They traditionally fought only for power. Their ideologies are very similar. If you look at the ideology of Adolf Hitler compared to the ideology of Joseph Stalin, 
Orlando, very similar. Very similar. Except the difference being the fascists love to incorporate big business into their plans. Which is what we're seeing now. So fast forward now to 2021. They've used climate change and the fear with that. Now they're using a pandemic and the fear created by that. So the people will submit so they'll comply. They won't ask questions because they're scared. They're scared they're going to die. They're scared their loved ones are going to die. And they're very vulnerable and almost dependent on this government, whether it's municipal, provincial, federal, global. So what you're seeing now is this, through this convergence, um, corporations, and they have been for quite a while, because people are really hyper-focused now, but you're seeing these, these multinationals, these big corporations, the oligarchs, the monopolies, taking control of society um, through marketing. I, I mean, we're talking about a vaccine that we're going to have to get a pass before we're playing. It's not the government, as I mentioned before. It's not the government necessarily or directly doing it. It's the corporations. So when you see you hear these, these private-public partnerships, that's that convergence. That's the convergence. And it's, it, it's tough for people to wrap their head around because, you know, folks that consider themselves to be on the right, who would traditionally support business, are now sort of having to take a step back, wait a minute. But it's, it's big business. And, 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 and we love free market, right? We love the free market. We love the idea of, of two individuals exchanging a service for, for compensation. That's capitalism, free market. And so we're at a point, and we have it for quite a while, where we have, I don't know, probably 40 years since we've really seen true free market principles being promoted. We've seen this crony capitalism. We've seen this partnership of all the players and the governance working together to dictate our lives. And we've allowed it to happen. We have to take responsibility for that. We've allowed it to happen through our own greed and our own thoughts of what we need. So we bought, we've been sucked into it. But what happens is now is, is so these big corporations who have way too much power at dictating terms to the people and to small business, and this small business gets sucked into it through government policy, government regulation, where you have to, as a business owner, sign on to these sustainable development goals. And if you don't, you're not going to get the contracts. You're not going to get favor. You'll be blacklisted. So small business owners are like, well, what do I do? I need to survive. I have employees. I want to keep functioning. So yeah, where do I sign? And then they get their subcontractors to sign on to these goals because they have to play along. So it's essentially this system of extortion, which has nothing to do with free market capitalism. It's, it's fascism. And so, when we look at, well, he wrote a book, Klaus Schwab, uh, COVID-19 and the Great Reset. I mean, every MP, MLA in Canada, anyway, uh, received one of these from Klaus Schwab. So they can be prepared for what's what's coming. And, and then you'll see Jason Kenny stand up and ask answering questions about it. And of course he rails against it. But what he doesn't mention ever is sustainable development, Agenda 2030, because they've signed on to it, and he was part of that when they signed. And so he can't. So he can rail against this, but doesn't touch sustainable development. And again, in 2019, they merged. So, this is the why. This is why there's a COVID. This is why there's a pandemic. This is why 
99.97% of people recover from COVID, yet we're locked down. We're locked down because they're using COVID, they're using a PCR test at 40 CT to establish numbers that they can feed the media that the media feeds the population. It scares the hell out of everybody. Every day, every newscast, you hear numbers, 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 case numbers, death numbers, 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 all derived from PCR tests that's bullshit. All of it. Meanwhile, when I go to a rally or we go to a rally, we're referred to, refer to as grandma killers. Because we don't wear masks, right? We go to the mall and we're being screamed at that we should die from COVID. Right? Yet, there have been proven effective therapies like ivermectin and ACQ that we knew about a month into this pandemic. I mean, people have known about it for years. I, I know people have been on it, treating symptoms uh, from lupus and other autoimmune. Effective. I mean, we had people testify in the Senate, in the American Senate, to tears a dog, saying, why aren't we saving people with this therapy? Why are we doing this? Why isn't our government in Saskatchewan? Why isn't our reindeer standing up on behalf of all the people who died from the flu or from other complications of the flu and treated them by ivermectin or HCQ? Why is he standing up and saying, you know what? I don't care about the pervading narrative. I care about representing the people who let me represent them. They won't do that because of that prevailing narrative. Because it's too politically risky. That's the surface answer. Some of them, I think, understand exactly what they're doing and may have even been extorted to do it. I don't know. But there's a reason why they're going along with it. A lot of it is obviously political risk. So I know most of the situation from a political perspective, no other. His advisors tell him, just go with the flow. Go on to get along. The public opinion is behind me. In actual fact, the public opinion is in front of him. He's not leading from the front, because that's too risky. He's going to let the media establish the narrative. He's going to come in behind that narrative behind the prevailing public opinion, and he's going to say, this is what we have to do. We're going to destroy the economy, we're going to destroy your lives, we're going to destroy jobs, we're going to kill people, we're going to let the elderly die. But I'm still going to be in power. Because you all let them be. And you'll continue to do it until somebody wakes them up. It infuriates me to know that people could be treated. It infuriates me when I ask the Premier on numerous occasions, emails, Twitter, social media, you name it, and I get no response to a simple question. Why are you not following the World Health Organization notice of January 20th, 2021? where it clearly said that recycling the PCR test to Ohio was too many false positives. Came out of the World Health Organization in 2021, January 20th, one hour after Biden was inaugurated. <laughs> Imagine. And this isn't, this isn't information that has evolved through their learning of this virus. They've known this information since the creator of the PCR test told everybody, don't use it to identify or diagnose infection. Don't do it. It doesn't work. It's 
not with four. Especially don't do it over 25 to 30 cycles. What do we do with Saskatchewan? 40. 40. Of course they're false. Of course there's a bunch of people have no symptoms are, are walking around positive. Killing grandma. Right? This is information, and, and I mean, I could go on for literally hours on sustainable development agenda, the Great Reset, the Industrial, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, all whatever you want. You want for hours. Um, tonight's about incremental or dripping some information. And I know a lot of folks that would come to an event like this are probably already awake and understand some of these things or a lot of these things. I just want to inspire you to either dig dirt deeper, do more research, and then pass it on to your friends. Drip it to them incrementally. Don't hit them with a sledgehammer of information. You lock them out, they're good for nothing. <laughs> but spread it. Freedom is far more contagious than a virus. But we have to inspire people, we have to inform people that freedom is under attack. Liberty is under attack. And it doesn't matter. And the way to reach people is, is to make it relatable. So is it the carbon tax that you don't like? Is it the attack on energy that you don't like? Is it no pipelines that you don't like? Is it the carbon tax you don't like? Is it the COVID restrictions you don't like? Is it the loss of your guns that you don't like? Is it transgender supremacy you don't like? Is it the education system you don't like? It doesn't matter. Because they're all under the umbrella of globalism. The only reason we're experiencing all of these issues across our country, from coast to coast, is globalism. It's sustainable development agenda, the Great Reset. It all boils down to that. That's why I referred to it in the past and as of today as the head of the snake. You cut off the head of the snake, we get our country back. The only way to cut off the head of the snake is top down. Well, the top's going to be hard to get to if we don't get to the people. So we have to do it from the bottom up. And that means community, that means grassroots, that means talking to your neighbors, your family, your co-workers, putting together meetings just like this in your community, and spreading the word, spreading the information, so people understand what the hell is going on. Because if we don't, we're done, we're finished. We're literally finished. They want to destroy the nation state, they want to destroy our country, they want to destroy everything it represents. Everything we claim to cherish, we're handing it to them on a silver platter because we're scared. And as the pastor mentioned, the spirit of fear is taking over. And so we got to reverse that. We reverse it. It's the spirit of freedom that needs to take over. And that's what we share with them. We have land, 
We have enormous amount of land. We have all the resources the world needs. And we have a population of 37 million. We are target number one. They need to control everything. Now, I just spent two more hours talking about how China is part of this. And they are. And they have huge influence on the UN. They control the UN, they control the World Health Organization, they control it all. And they're buying up our debt, our Canadian debt. They're buying up our resources. They're buying up our infrastructure. They're buying everything. And our governments are handing it to them. Here you go. It's insane. So anyways, I, I started rambling again. It's okay, you need to set up anyway. Okay, I'll keep rambling then. Okay, um, you do I need some lights off. Okay. Do you want